Yeah, welcome everyone. I'd like to give you today an introduction into custom Linchex for Android. Um, my name is Mark Prengemann. I'm a working student for WIRE and I'm currently studying computer science here at the Technical University in Berlin. You can reach me via one of the following channels if you like, if you have questions. Um, so who of you actually used Lint before? That's good. And who of you is using it like on your continuous integration system? So basically daily. Okay. So just as a quick recap, Lint is a static code analysis tool which basically takes your app source files and also the XML files and so on and the configuration XML where you can enable, disable checks and configure some other things. And it generates then an output, um, a report which is grouped by category and yeah, hopefully this is empty at the end of the day. And so when should you use Lint? It's, from my point of view, a nice way to ensure code quality. So basically, you can, you can find little bugs and issues um, by using Lint. And so because you don't have, the reviewer doesn't have to focus on the, these little things, um, he can focus on the um, basic idea of a, a pull request, for example, so that he doesn't get confused by other little things. And you can, for example, also, if you use this in your team internal libraries or something like that, um, you can prevent new team members or other people if you open source your things. Um, you can include checks there as well so that no one misuses your libraries. But unfortunately, the APIs for writing custom lint checks is not final. So you find quite often the annotation at beta. And that's why the documentation is also not really existing. So basically, you um, need to check the examples that you can find in the Android repositories. Um, and that's also the reason why you can't find any um, real documentation on how to integrate it within your build system, how to test it, and how to debug it. And let's get started with our own check. Basically, I want to um, show you on a real example um, how to write the check and how to include this check in it, into your um, project. <coughs> So first of all, a few ideas. Um, imagine you use dependency injection, a framework, um, or something like Butterknife. So probably you have in almost all your fragments um, like these inject methods, and it would be nice if those would move in, in, a, in a base class or something like that. And so you want to ensure that all your fragments and activities um, extend those base classes. Or if you, almost everyone uses a lot of helper methods, um, so they are most of the time extracted in a um, utils class. And so one example would be if you have a, um, a method for extracting or finding the view in a um, BIID, um, which automatically casts that view. And so if we have this method extracted in a view utils class, um, we want to ensure that everywhere in your project you use this helper method instead of the find view by ID method. Um, a potential bug that can happen is also if you compare floats directly. Um, as you all hopefully know, you shouldn't do this. Instead, you should use the float equals method. But unfortunately, this returns an int, and so you have to check whether this result is zero or not. And so you can ex extract this as well in a um, helper method and then check whether, and write a custom check that you don't compare floats directly for equality and instead use this helper method. This can be also done if you, for example, compare the result of two um, methods where 
also one returns an int and one a float, for example. You can find leaking resources, so if you keep a reference and doesn't clear it. Um, I think in every team uses also some kind of naming convention um, for like, um, like variables, member variables, for constants, and also how to um, name like drawables. And those things can be also found. So as well, like hard-coded values in XMLs, um, I think those should be also extracted in a dimension XML or something like that. And my example will be for Timber. Timber is a nice logger by Jake Wharton. I contributed to that project as well, the Linchex. So you can find some examples there as well. And basically the, the good thing is, from my point of view, that you can have multiple ways of um, yeah, logging for your different build flavors. So for a production build, you maybe just want to report the errors to your trash reporter. And for the debug build, you want to log everything. And so to ensure that Timber is working correctly, we want to write a check um, that checks that you don't use uh, Android Utils lock uh, anywhere, and instead that you use Timber. So let's get started. First of all, we need a detector. A detector is responsible for scanning through the code and find and report issues. So here we have our hmm, is it working? we have our wrong timber usage, detect, usage detector, which extends the detector. Um, this one uh, implements also the Java scanner interface. The, the scanner that you implement depends basically on the goal of your issue. So there are several ones, including an XML scanner, a Java scanner, and a class scanner. As the names say, they are responsible for scanning different types. So we have here then a constant issue that I will explain later on. And you can have multiple issues in one detector. So basically, one, a detector can find and report different issues. It's not just limited to one issue. So since we implemented the Java scanner interface, we override the get applicable method names. So basically that means that we want to find um, all methods that are called like V, D, I, W, E, W, T, F, um, which are the methods that exist by the Android Utils lock. So we want to find all these um, methods and analyze them if there is a call. This happens in the visit method method. And there we check whether um, the, the class that they exist in is uh, Android Utils lock. And so if we found such a call, which is wrong, we report it. Therefore, we use a context report method, um, which the context is the Java context in this case. And we pass the, the issue, um, the node, which is basically the elements that we found, and the location. And we add a little uh, message to explain that issue there. So the, the nice thing with the Java context report um, is that um, this handles also suppression of warnings. So if you annotated your class, or I don't know, um, with uh, suppress warnings annotations, they are not reported. Um, now I, I talked already a lot about an issue. So an issue is a potential bug in an Android application, which is, as you saw before, um, discovered by a detector. The information that are contained in the issue are exposed to the, to the user or the developer. Um, so first of all, every issue needs an ID. Um, this ID should be unique within yeah, every issue. So to ensure that it's um, really unique, it's kind of recommended to add a little prefix. So in our case, we could add something like com.wire.lock.timber. Um, that 
that way you ensure that if you use other libraries that use um, checks, um, that they are definitely unique IDs. Afterwards, you should add a short summary, which is regarding the documentation, uh, typically five to six words or less. And you shouldn't explain the issue as uh, the potential fix there. This should be in the full explanation of the issue. Um, every issue should um, be added to a kind of category. So in our case, we use the messages category, which is part of the correctness. And I think correctness makes sense for, for wrong usage. Um, the pri priority is just the default normal one, so five. Um, 10 is the most important or severe. And here you add also the default severity, which can be overwritten by the um, lint configuration XML. Um, so in our case, this is just a warning because um, I think, so you can configure lint in the way that also warnings are treated as errors and that errors should break your build. So it's the decision of the developer basically, but the severity can be also overwritten by um, with the lint configuration file. And afterwards, the last parameter is the implementation. The implementation is basically the connection between the detector class and your issue. So in our case, we pass here the wrong timber usage detector and the scope. The scope is basically the description of the files that should be analyzed by your detector. So in our case, we just want to scan the Java files. And that's why we add the Java file scope. And that's also the reason that we had to implement the Java scanner interface, because the detector then expects that. But there are also other ones, including the resource files and for the class files. And yeah. So now we have a detector and an issue. Now we need to register this somehow so that our lint tool can find it. This happens in the issue registry. So you need to return a list of all your custom, of all your issues that you want to include. And yeah, basically that's, that's it. To write, a, to have the, the custom check included. But how can you include this now in your project? Um, I mean, probably you want to include the checks so that they can automatically run with the default Gradle task. And let's do this. So first of all, you need to add a Java module which contains all the sources of the custom detector and the issue registry. The is issue registry should be added to the manifest for the jar. So for example, by uh, with uh, manifest attribute. And so this should be then part of the build gradle of that Java module. And this should export a uh, lint jar. This Java module is a dependency of the Android library module lint lib. And so since the other one exported lint, a lint jar, this lint jar will be included um, as a dependency to the lint lib. And the lint lib is then a dependency to the um, app, to your app. Um, by using this architecture, you basically ensure that with every build, if something changed in, in your, in your uh, custom checks, that the lint jar is rebuilt and re-added so that you have every time the latest version. Um, yeah, and you can basically then execute the code um, by using the normal lint task on your Gradle wrapper and configure all the tasks and so on just as usual. You can find more information about how to configure lint in Gradle here. Yeah, but the question is, now we have it included, but I mean, probably everyone likes debugging and testing and so we want to add tests to our checks. So the test should be part of the lint rules module. 
And I personally tested it with JUnit 4.12 and EasyMox 3.3. Probably um, later versions work as well. And you register all the tests just as usual in the Gradle file. And so we have here our wrong timber usage test, which extends the lint check test. This lint check test is basically a custom version of the abstract check test, which is the way Google themselves tests um, their lint checks. Um, yeah, the abstract check test has unfortunately a lot of overhead, so this one is a cleaned out version which um, just needs you to override the detector. So you need to return the detector for the issues that you want to test in that unit test. In our case, we return that's why here's a wrong timber usage detector. And the lint check test will then figure out which issues um, should be checked. But you can also override the get issues method to just limit this to, for example, to one issue. Yeah, and then we have a normal unit test. And here in this case, we want to test one file, which is a wrong timber test activity, which is basically just a normal Java um, file. And so this can be checked with the lint files. You get a lint result and can just um, compare this with the expected result. And yeah, the wrong timber test activity class um, has a prefix, uh, has a suffix txt, so that it's just a text file because it, it should, shouldn't be handled as a, as a class because the lint um, rules module basically doesn't know anything about Android. It's just pure Java. And you should place it, or the, the um, default test expects that those classes are in the data source package in the test resources directory. And you can find more examples on those tests and how to include them also for the XMLs and the class files um, here. And in our case, we would get, we would expect here an, um, a found, we would expect that this one is found, but this one is fine. And debugging would be also nice. This is unfortunately not possible on the real sources, so with, an, with a shipped um, lint tool within the Android SDK. <coughs> Maybe it should be, I guess it should be possible if you build the lint um, tool completely on your own and then chip it uh, and then debug it. But the workaround is that you debug your tests. So in this way, you are kind of forced to write tests for your lint checks because you can there specify what you expect and you can debug it. So all in all, um, the, the API is not really a good documented. So you have to read a lot of examples by Google. For example, um, I can recommend the string format class because there is a string format detector which has a lot of um, different ways to figure out things. And to, uh, to have something like a, like a way to get started, I created a little template project that you can find here. Um, there is a created um, issue, the, the custom check included there, and it's included in the base project. Um, yeah, and all in all, custom lint checks can improve your code quality and help new team members to get started. Do you have any questions? Well, first of all, thank you very much, Mark, for your presentation.